Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about images, but what I mean is that we're going to be talking about images on your website, on the website that you already have. So basically I want to discuss with you how to treat them, how to find the information about them, and if you want to make some changes, how to do that. So basically I have a list of things that we're going to cover today. On one hand it's going to be how to navigate through the media library, also what to do with the new images, what to do with the old images, and how to find information about what kind of size images you need to put on a place where you want to replace an image. So here we have our uh, website on WebDash, but um, you basically use it for your own website. So what you do is you log in into your website, into your, your WordPress website, and then you go to your media library. It's right here, you go to media, and let's say you want to change a particular image that you know you want to change. Like for example, if you go to if we decide to go to our portfolio and I choose this one and I decide that I want to change like for example this picture the first one I just decided that I want to change it but I don't know what size it should be and um, how to optimize that image so first of all what I would do is you go to your media library you find the image that you want to change and then when you click on it you can see the details about that image right here first you see the day that it was uploaded where it's uploaded so you can actually know on which pages it occurs honestly you cannot trust it uh, like a hundred percent sometimes it doesn't show some of the pages that it appears I hope they're gonna change it or they already have with the new updates of WordPress but anyhow you normally know where your image is placed and you can double check here as well then we have the file name and this is very important when you decide to change your image that you need to um, name it so that on one hand it's easy for search for you in the media library let's say here i want to search for the name of the image and i write down the other because it's easier here you go all the images about that particular portfolio come up and i can find it here so it's easy for search but also it's good for your seo optimization so i really really recommend when you upload a new image that you name it the right way uh, you also have the title here that's also good for seo uh, you can also uh, fill out your uh, alternative text that's also good for seo and you have the file url what I normally do, for example, if you want to check, I'm copying the URL here in the browser. If I want to download that image, that's the easiest way to do it. So I just uh, open it in the browser and then right click on the image and then save image. So in this way, you want, for example, to double check what is the name of the image. Let's go here here you can see the name of the file that's actually what i'm talking about so you before you upload an image to your website you need to make the file name like a good file name that would be the more descriptive the better like for example one good formula would be to name uh, first the name of your website like for example in my case webdash uh, then you write the name of the page that you want it to be uploaded and then you write the name of the thing that is showing up on the actual image and then you upload it to your website uh, i'm not going to show you how to upload it to your website because it depends what kind of builder you're using but basically when you upload it to media library you go to the page that is um that the image is and then you just replace it you delete the old one and you find the new one so when you delete your old image from elementor for example you go to the other page on the portfolio element and then you go um, where do i have the portfolio i don't have it here i need to open it again so if you want to change it you can go to the portfolio change it in the portfolio but then the old image still appears in your media library so please delete that image from the media library 
you have to go to the media library and delete it from there because if you just replace it from the view from Elementor, that's just replacing the image. It's still here in your file data. So you need to delete the old one. One pro tip is actually if you want to exchange an image, let's say I want to exchange this image, don't place the same exact name on the new image that you're gonna upload because sometimes if both of them are in your media library, they're gonna, um, sometimes the new image may not appear in the view as a new image because it has the same file name as the old one. So you can change something about the name, upload the new one, replace it on the page that you want to replace it, and then go to your media library and delete the image that you don't want to use anymore. That's super important because you don't want to overload your hosting with your information. The other thing that you need to do before you upload your image to the website is optimize its size. Like for example, here you can see that this image is 41 kilobytes. Uh, there are a few ways to do it. Um, actually, and also you can see the dimensions that are 400 by 800 and uh, 15 pixels. So for example, you saw that this image is actually appears small in the website. It's not like a background image or a big image that has to cover the whole space. So that's why you decide how many pixels you want it to be. Uh, but of course, in this case, if you want to replace that image, you resize the image that you create or get from a designer or whatever. You resize it to the same dimensions and then you optimize it in file size. You can resize it in the same dimensions in Photoshop, you can resize it, there's a free uh, browser um, program that's photop.com, you can use that as well. And then you optimize it in terms of your file size. When you download it from Photop or Photoshop, you go to tinypng.com, you upload it here and you download it in the optimized file size. You rename the name the correct way and then you upload it to your website. So uh, these are very important things in terms of images so that you know what to do when you want to change an image on your website and you don't want to call your uh, website agency studio or designer the person that actually created your website. But of course, if you need help with that, you should contact your um, website creator for for uh, help if you need it. But these are one of some of the most important things to have in mind when you're uh, exchanging and you want to change something, some images on your current website. Another pro tip that I want to mention here is try to never use text on top of images. Like in this case, this is a screenshot of the website. So obviously there's text on it. But for example, if I go to the website and I go here and I see a background image like I have right here um, and or a background, um, you know, color or image, I haven't put that text on top of the image because sometimes um, first is bad for your SEO, second is bad for your responsiveness of the website. So that text is going to be cut in different ways in different browsers and or in different um, screen sizes so you don't want to put the text on the image you that's why website creators like us we uh, use these tools like the builders or uh, programming code to put the text on top of the element that is your image so your image is just the background just a plain image and then we use another element on the website to put that text on top of it and as you can see when I um, mark it, I can mark it because it's a different element. It's not part of the image. It's not put on the Photoshop as uh, text on the image. Uh, and it's a very, very bad idea to put text on top of image in Photoshop and then try to place it and resize it on, on your website. So this is a very bad idea. And yeah, 
also what I didn't mention is that optimizing your images in terms of size helps with your website speed and also helps with your hostings to not get overcrowded and you not needing to spend much money on bigger um, bigger server, uh, server space just because you didn't optimize your images so um, this is also a very important part and we actually have a blog post a very extensive article mentioning many of the things that I mentioned in that video but also more things about file formats and how to optimize your images why it's important so make sure to check that out we have it on you can find it on our blog it's one of the very first articles on our blog because it is very essential so I hope that was uh, helpful for you thank you for watching and have a nice day